There are also drugs which inhibit uh, thromboxin A2 production or the function of thromboxin A2. Uh, we have thromboxin A2 synthase inhibitors, as well as we have thromboxin A2 um, antagonists, which prevent the function of thromboxin A2. But most importantly, a good way to uh, inhibit inflammation or stop promoting inflammation is by inhibiting the main enzyme involved in the production of all this, which is cyclooxygenase. So uh, a treatment that can be used is by using glucocorticoids. So lipocortin can inhibit cyclooxygenase and therefore inhibit the production of all these inflammatory mediators. Now let's talk a little bit more about cyclooxygenase. There are about two to three forms. The third one is not really sure yet, but there's definitely two. There's cyclooxygenase 1 or COX-1, which is constitutive, which means that it is always functioning. It is always there. There's also COX-2, cyclooxygenase 2, which is inductive. It, it occurs during inflammation mainly. So COX-1 is always there. COX-2 is there uh, to promote inflammation or during inflammation. Another drug that inhibits the enzyme cyclooxygenase are the NSAIDs, the non, uh, the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. And these are the most common, and many people take it. It's things like ibuprofen as well as aspirin. They have anti inflammatory, anti puretic, and analgesic, analgesic effects. All NSAIDs, all non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, work by inhibiting uh, the, the COX enzyme, and thus the production of prostaglandin and thromboxins A2. A newer type of drug which is available in the market it, are the COXIBs, which specifically work by inhibiting the enzyme uh, COX2, so cyclooxygenase 2, which is the inductive one, which occurs during inflammation. So now we know uh, the pathway from arachidonic acid to prostaglandins and thromboxins through the enzyme cyclooxygenase and what drugs uh, can be used to prevent the production of these or, or, or the function of these inflammatory mediators. Now let's follow the second main enzyme which is lipoxygenase. There are a few lipoxygenase. There is uh, 12 lipoxygenase, there's 15 lipo lipoxygenase, and there's 5 lipoxygenase. These are the main ones. Specifically, 5 lipoxygenase, because 5 lipoxygenase is what produces the leukotrienes, which is one of the main inflammatory mediators in our body. So, arachidonic acid by, can be converted to 12-HPETE by the enzyme 12-lipoxygenase. 12-HPETE is unstable and will quickly convert to 12-HETE. And 12-HETE will cause inflammatory actions. Now the difference between the two is that one has a hydroperoxy group and the other has a hydroxyl group. Arachidonic acid can also convert to 15-HPETE by the enzyme 15-lipoxygenase. 15-HPETE would then quickly convert to 15-HETE. The difference, again, being that the first had a hydroperoxy group and the second had a hydroxyl group. Now, 15-HETE can convert to lipotoxin A and B by the enzyme 5-lipoxygenase. Now, lipotoxin A and B are interesting because it has sort of an anti-inflammatory effect. Now, they act on polymorphic nuclear leukocytes, neutrophils, to pose the action of pro-inflammatory stimuli. Thus, it acts like a stop signal to inhibit inflammation. So, it's a bit strange because all the other uh, molecules promote inflammation, but this sort of suppresses inflammation. So continue, continuing on, arachidonic acid can also be converted straight away to 5-HPETE by the enzyme 5-lipoxygenase. 5-HPETE has uh, two pathways. It can convert to uh, the 5-HETE and thus can have uh, inflammatory effects. Alternatively, 5-HPETE can convert to leukotriene A4. 
leukotriene A4 um, can be hydrolyzed to form leukotriene B4 by the enzyme hydrolase. Leukotriene B4 acts as a chemotaxis in the inflammatory response. Leukotriene A4 can also convert to leukotriene C4 by the enzyme glutathione S transferase. Leukotriene C4 can then convert to leukotriene D4 by Y um, glut uh, sorry, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, and an acid was removed. And then leukotriene D4 can convert to leukotriene E4 by the enzyme dipeptidase, removing a glycine group. Leukotriene E4 can then finally convert to leukotriene F4 by the same enzyme, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. An acid is added in this case. So these are all leukotrienes. Of course, these can convert, some of these can convert back to its previous one, such as leukotriene F4 can convert back to leukotriene E4 by removing a, a, a gamma glutamate group, and then leukotriene D4 can convert back to leukotriene C4 uh, by adding a gamma glutamate group. Now it's pretty simple to remember the leukotrienes because you can think A4 goes to B4, then A4 goes to C4, D4, E4, and F4. The leukotriene C4, D4, E4, and F4 are are important in the lungs. So when we think of these leukotrienes, we think of the lungs. These leukotrienes are particularly important in asthma, for example. They cause constriction of bronchial muscles, and they also cause vasodilation of most vessels, but for the coronary, coronary vessels, they, use, they cause vasoconstriction. So if these leukotrienes work on the lungs to cause bronchial constriction and therefore this asthma effect, there are drugs available that will prevent these leukotrienes to attach to the receptors within the lungs. These drugs are known as leukotriene receptor antagonists, simple enough, and they work by essentially um, binding onto the receptor and preventing the leukotrienes to attach to it, thus preventing bronchial constriction and therefore the asthma effect. Other drugs that can prevent the formation of these leukotrienes are the 5-lipoxygenase inhibitors, which essentially inhibits the enzyme 5-lipoxygenase. But by using 5-lipoxygenase inhibitor, it will also prevent the formation of lipotoxin A and B. And as we know, lipotoxin A and B has sort of an anti-inflammatory effect. But doesn't matter because this 5-lipoxygenase inhibitor will essentially prevent the formation of all these down the bottom, uh, the, lip the leukotrienes, essentially. And that concludes this video on arachidonic acid metabolites and the production of the inflammatory mediators, the prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and the thromboxanes. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you.